Hey everyone, welcome to Maximum and Minimums. This is Nicholas JMV. Uh, this example is courtesy of Patrick JMT. So he, I found a nice example that I'm going to go ahead and re-explain that he did. Um, so you should check him out if you want to, Patrick JMT. But this is his example. I'm just kind of re-explaining for, for you guys here. Okay, so uh, let's look at our example. Uh, we're going to be talking about maximum and mins today, and so we're going to use the graph to find the absolute and the local maximum and minimum values of a function. So here's the idea. So think of like just here's this general function f of x, and I've, I've labeled the points for you. It's like a mountain range, okay? When we think local, we think home, you know, in a specific area. We're thinking a, not on a broad spectrum, but a very small area. So imagine, if you will, if you're, if you're thinking of the whole graph, Okay, when we look at the whole graph, we can think about like absolutes, but we look at specific hills, okay, those are our locals. So when we talk about a local minimum or local maximum, a local minimum would be the smallest point in a given area, in a, in a local community. A maximum would be a largest value in a particular area. Now notice how this graph goes on forever with the areas. So this would not be, these points here would not be absolute maximums because they wouldn't be the largest points because there'd be a point up here and a point up here that's even larger. Okay, so if I wanted to go ahead and just kind of, there's two things you could do. You could list your local minimums, just the values, and most people um, list the y values, okay? Um, and, and some people list the points, but so we could do local min, local max. Okay, so when I start looking at these values, okay, here, the y value, the smallest value in this area, it's the low point, right? It's we're filling the cup. The local min here for the, the y value would be 3. Okay, when I travel along this hill up to the top of the mountain, it's a opens down, right? It's concave down. Okay, that's going to be a maximum. So that y value would be a five at negative two five. So I'm listing the y values here for my local min and max. And then I cruise down here, down way below. Okay, in this general area. Okay, now that would be one negative four. Okay, so my local min would be negative four here. Okay. And my next local max would be 5 here because I go up and there's a hill. But however, we've already listed 5, so we don't need to do it again. And then we can go ahead and look at listing this last point here um, as a local minimum as well, so at 4. Okay, so there's our values. Now, if you wanted to list them out as ordered pairs, the local min here would be negative 5, 3, Okay, these are our points for local mins, and we'd say at negative four, so we'd have one negative four. Okay, and then we'd have six four. In our max, we could list both points. Now, even though they had the same y value, we'd have negative two five. Okay, and then we would have four five. Okay, now absolute max and absolute mins would be the absolute largest or smallest value in the range. Now, there wouldn't be a largest value because of these arrows, okay? They're just going on forever. We'd actually, so the local here, the smallest point on the thing, this would be the absolute minimum as well. So we'd also have an absolute minimum here at 1.0. Now, it was that local point, so that would be ne 1, negative 4. Okay, so um, that's how we find local maxes, local mins, and, and look at absolute maximum mins. Remember, absolute is looking kind of looking at the whole graph. What's the largest or smallest value on the graph? And then local, we look at little hills on the graph to see if they're going to be a local max or min. So if you have any questions or comments, let me know. We'll see you next time.